Auburn position previews for 2019. Next on Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. All right, we're talking about the Auburn Tigers. We got Vernon Speak Sports on the line uh, to talk of the Tigers and Gus Malzahn's pursuit of the SEC Western Division Championship this fall. Vernon Speak Sports joining us. Uh, Vernon, how you doing today? Uh, doing pretty good. We just recently talked about uh, the defensive line actually today, early this morning on a podcast. So, hey, this is right on time. Mark, glad to be back with you. Want to remind everyone you can help us build the channel by grabbing the Amazon link in the description section below. Doesn't cost you an extra penny. Just do your regular shopping. All right. Defensive line, Dontavious Russell. I'm looking at the numbers. They don't point to the talent. Obviously, he's eating up blockers. He's forcing plays to other guys. He's disrupting plays that he doesn't get credit for. Still six uh, tackles for loss and 36 total stops. He's going to be missed. Uh, your thoughts about the defensive line play for 2019. We're talking Auburn football here. When we talk, definitely got to talk about the defensive line for the Auburn Tigers. One thing that Auburn was very fortunate is to have Derek Brown. We've talked about this several times is the fact that Derek Brown uh, is returning obviously could have been, I, I don't think he would have been a number uh, first round pick, but I think he would have been, you know, late first round, early second round, but to have a guy like him coming back, is going to be huge for the Auburn Tigers for several reasons. Well, number one, you don't have to juggle things around uh, the defensive line. You, 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 it gives you more options, and it gives you a lot more viable options. But Dontavious Russell, Mark, I'm going to tell you, will be missed in that interior line. If you go back and look at the LSU game very, from 2018, very disruptive. It's going to be hard to replace him. Yeah, when I look at Derek Brown, uh, it just brings to mind so many memories of watching key Auburn games. And of course, I'm not an Auburn guy, so I don't watch the Jacksonville State game. I'm watching all the big games. <coughs> I'm at Georgia. I'm watching the key SEC games that Auburn plays about five to six times per year. Right. And every time I watch, Derek Brown is a force. So when I look at the numbers, I'm like, Wow, the, the numbers don't match in terms of sacks and tackles for loss. What I see when I see this guy play against the best competition. See, here's the thing with Derrick Brown. I mentioned this on a podcast earlier today. I think Derrick Brown has yet to have that breakout season. I feel that th this is going to have to be the year that Derrick Brown has that breakout season in order to solidify him as an Auburn great. When you look back at the Nick Farrelly's and you look at the D Fords and you look at the Jeff Hollins, they solidified their stamp. And I, I, I totally understand all the way. And that's what I talked about in my podcast earlier today, that Derrick Brown has yet to to exceed that elite status that we expected him to have, especially being one of the most highly recruited players in Auburn history. Now, we'll give him we'll give him a little slack. He's been under the um, shadows of Dontavious Russell under uh, D Deshaun Davis as well as Trey Matthews. Trey Matthews does not play on the interior line, didn't play on the interior line, but was a mainstay nonetheless. Also, you talk about Carlton Davis, which was a uh, all-SEC, all-American cornerback for Auburn. So Derrick Brown now finally has that opportunity, in my opinion, to solidify himself as a great, because this is his defense now. He doesn't have those, old, those uh, experienced guys to lean on so to speak it's all on him at this point so you make a great point mark it's been one of the best defensive fronts in college football over the last four to five years uh, do you expect it to maintain that standard I, I i really really expect it to maintain that standard on a very um high level when you talk about the auburn defensive line one position that you have to you know bring to the forefront is the buck linebacker position and for those guys who don't know what a buck linebacker is, a buck linebacker is basically, if you remember Lawrence Taylor from uh, the New York Giants, he kind of was the pioneer of this particular position. It's usually a stand-up position, and it's usually a guy who is very athletic, who's very large at the same time, who can disrupt the, um, who creates mismatches with the offensive tackle, but has the um, ability to, you know, somewhat cover in the flat. And I, in all of the years that Auburn has been very successful on the defensive line, the Buck linebacker played at a very high elite level. You talk about D Ford back in 2013, 10 plus tackles for loss, 
10 plus sacks. You also talk about Carl Lawson, same thing, same result. You talk about Jeff Holland back in 2017, same result. In order for this defensive line to be elite and possibly help uh, catalyze Auburn to a 2019 run in the SEC West, the Buck linebacker has to play at an optimal level. We do feel that Nick Cole is the favorite to take on this position. Nick Coe coming off a nice season of 13 and a half tackles for loss and seven sacks. 